Welcome to the online broadcast of Word of Life Pentecostal Church of Christ, located in Greensboro, North Carolina, where the senior pastor is Bishop Marion Hickman. Thank you for joining us, and we pray that the Word of God reaches you today through this broadcast. May it lift you to life. Good morning and happy resurrection. This is a joyous day for us in the kingdom of God. It's joyous for us in Christendom to know that our Savior has risen and he has gone before us. Before I start the message or give you a thought for today, we want to remind everyone to wear your mask. Wear your mask for protection. You want to also get gloves so that when you're touching and you're out and about, you want to protect your family, protect yourself, that you're not bringing anything uh, contaminated into your home on your hands. This morning, I'm going to read to you from the scriptures, Matthew, the 28th chapter, starting at verse 1. The scriptures read as such. Now, after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake for an angel appeared and had descended from heaven and came and rolled away the stone. The angel sat on the stone. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing was white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became as dead men. But the angel said to the women, don't be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus, whom has, or who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen. And he said, come, see the place where he laid. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, that he has risen from the dead, and behold, he is going before you to Galilee. He is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. And this is where my, my thought is coming from for a moment, is when the angel said, see, he has gone on before you. And we want to just share with you that Jesus has gone on before us. And, and, and something that came to my mind was a little over three years ago, I went through uh, the process of a knee transplant, knee surgery, knee replacement. And in the process of it, I uh, went to the hospital, had the knee replacement. And while there, they sent me to rehabilitation. And they said, okay, Miss Hickman, it's time for you to get up. It's time now for you to go and have therapy. So they took me, took me there in a wheelchair and I just knew I was gonna stay in the wheelchair. So they began to do some various work on my leg and movements on my leg. And then they told me, it's time for you to walk. I was so afraid to walk because I hadn't done it before. And you know, walked after the surgery. And so I looked around in the room and there was a man on a bicycle. He had had knee replacement. He went around, he did it a couple of times, and then he went and said, that's it, I can't, I can't do anymore. And then there was a lady on the bicycle, and she was just riding, going around, bending that knee, and she did it so much, and she rung the bell saying, I've done it. I was able to go around four or five times with that pedal. She did it. And that was just a sign or an example to me. She went before me and did it. So I'll be able to do it. And then, I don't know if you all remember, even as kids, if you had, uh, I had siblings in my family that knew how to swim real good. Got on the diving board and they jumped in and did a beautiful dive. I said, I, I can't do that. But the more I watched them, 
and they were younger than me. I said, maybe I can try it. So what I did was I went to the three feet and I just jumped in it. And that felt so good, but they went before me to let me know that at some day, I'm gonna be able to do a dive. And sometimes maybe when you were children or you, you'd sit at the dinner table and, 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 and mother or grandma would put something in front of you that you hadn't seen before. And they just expected you to eat it because it was dinner. And I would look at it and say, I can't eat that. And the others would look funny too. But then they would taste it and they say, oh, this is good. Here, Mary, and try it. And I say, no, no, it don't look right. And then I would try it and I say, this is good. I did it. And this is to say, Jesus went before us just like he did the disciples. And he went before them and he didn't just go before them, but he went before them in death. He was resurrected, walked the streets for 40 days, and he's just telling us, you're going to die one day, but I'll resurrect you. And you're going to come back and walk just like I'm walking. You're going to eat like I'm eating. You're going to be able to be touched like I'm being touched. Only to those who are looking for his return. But let me tell you, that the resurrection is a hope for us. It's a hope letting us know that just as Christ said, he has gone before us. I don't care what test, trial, tribulation, even the corona uh, 19 that we're going through. God has gone before us. He not only gone before us, but he's carrying us through this. Not just this. There are some of you that's hurting because some of your relatives or loved ones have gone on because of this. God is saying, I'm with you in it. Even in the pain of it, I'm with you. Myself, why go back to Galilee? And I believe God told them to go back to Galilee because that's where they started. That's where he called them. That's where he pulled the fishermen from their assignments doing fish and shopping. He told them and had them go back from where they began. In spite of the fact that Jesus had told them on numerous occasions that he must die and then be raised from the dead, the disciples still didn't get it. They still didn't get it. So after Jesus was crucified, instead of heading to Galilee as he had commanded, they were instead hiding, hiding out in fear of what happened to Jesus, hiding out in Jerusalem, hiding out with no hope of the words that he told them that he was going to rise again and that there would be no resurrection. But for now, their fear was greater than their hope in the resurrection. Later that day, Jesus encounters two disciples along the road to Emmaus. It shows them how the Old Testament scriptures spoke of him. And he opens their eyes and reveals himself to them. Then that night, as the apostles, with the exception of Thomas, gathered there in Jerusalem, still in hiding. They were still in hiding. Still in hiding. Jesus appears to them. And then Jesus returned there again eight days later. Then Thomas was present. At some point during that time, Jesus knows that the disciples are finally ready to do what he commanded and to go to Galilee now. So he goes ahead of them. And when they arrive there, he gives his disciples their final marching orders, which is called the Great Commission. This is so interesting. Because all the time they had walked with Jesus, they didn't embrace the words he was saying. It wasn't until he came out of the tomb that they embraced the words that he had for them. And to close this, I want to say, just as Jesus went before the disciples, just as Jesus went first, what did he go first as? To experience death. 
But remember, he did die, but he made a promise that he was coming back. He said, kill this body, but in three days, I'll be back up. Three days he got back up. And he went before the disciples, preparing the way for what was to come and what they were to do. He's done the same for us. He died, he rose again. Just as we shall die and rise again. But even before we die in the natural, we must die to us that we may do the will of the Father. Let me tell you, I'm sure when the apostles saw that they gave up their lives for something greater, they saw the power of the resurrection then. Just as, as we give up our lives in this life and walk in the power of the resurrection of Jesus. Rejoice today because Jesus has gone before you. Whatever your assignment is, whatever God has given you to do, he's already gone before you. You can accomplish it. You can fulfill it because he's walking not only with you, but he walked before. In Jesus' name, you all have a great resurrection day. And know that Jesus is in your today, he's in your tomorrow, and every day after that. Grace and peace. Here are your giving options. Text the keyword WOLTCC and the amount that you desire to give to 77977. Please note that capital letters are not required for the keyword and you must include a space between the keyword and the amount that you would like to give. You may also visit our website at www.wolpccg.org and click the give link or mail your tithe and offering to Word of Life PCC PO Box 14663 Greensboro, North Carolina 27415. Thank you for joining us. We pray you receive something from the word this morning. Join us again Wednesday at 7 p.m. Until then, may the peace of God be upon you.